Hello everyone, it is Toby from Toby's Urban Sketch. Today we are doing something very ambitious, but I'm going to show you how, just to simplify things which feel too ambitious, to have fun with them and um, basically enjoy your sketching more. So this is Ely Cathedral up in the corner. Um, it's a photo I took a few weeks ago now. Um, and it is just awfully complicated, isn't it? But how can we take something complicated, doing it pen first, um, no pencil, and still have a good time? Well, number one, it's just about relaxing and just enjoying and just seeing what happens. Number two, it's about focusing on those big shapes, not on those little details. So let's just get started. Let's pick out a prominent shape. And I think the top of the, the front is, is quite a prominent shape. And we just start popping them down. So we've got a, we've got a big triangle there. And underneath it, we've just got this series of squares. And we can just build these up. And if we're nice and loose with our line work, if we make a mistake, and oh my word, we will make some mistakes with this one, won't we? Because it is very complicated. But if we make mistakes, it just doesn't matter. So I'm going to come down now, I'm finding all my sort of long rectangles, essentially lines, aren't they? And do you see when you actually look at the reference how much detail there is? Every one of these sort of blocks has so much detail, which we could spend ages popping in, but that isn't what is going to make us recognize this cathedral. What's going to make us recognize the cathedral are these big shapes, and to some extent, actually, the surroundings. So, almost just popping in a, a giant building in the right landscape you'd probably know exactly what it was. So just continuing with this same idea. So grabbing shapes and being really loose. But it's already coming together. We can start, let's just pop in a few of these windows now and we can use the same principle. We don't even have to finish the windows. Our eyes do the rest of the work for us. And we've got another window here and here. And this, this building, when, when you look at it, it's amazing how sort of not symmetrical it is. Um, I would just not focus on the lack of symmetry. So as an example, we've got some windows on this side, but none on this side. I'll pop them in. And if you want to pop windows in on that side, it sort of makes the image feel more joined up. So go for it. Next, we've got this long roof. Be careful not to it, we know it's really long, so we instantly sort of want to draw it really long, but actually it's it's very foreshortened by the perspective. So just be a bit careful, do a little bit of sense checking, measuring, to make sure you get it about the right length. Okay, so I think this far is probably far enough. And I'm going to move on to the, the upper echelons of this. Again, it's a really complicated shape, isn't it? Full of detail, but let's just turn it into essentially what's probably a, a hexagon or a dodecagon or something. And the same for our, our tower. It's just a series of vertical lines, really. And we can add in a, a couple more to suggest a bit more shape. But the more we leave to the eye, to the, to the eye, the more we leave to the brain, and the less we sort of try and present to the eye, then the easier it's going to be to get something which is reminiscent. As soon as you start trying to add in every little detail, that's where you'll get a bit, un, a bit unstuck and becomes too cluttered, and too many mistakes make it too obvious that something has gone wrong. So coming down here, we've got a similar idea of a few sort of rectangles same down here another roof here so we can just make something like that and along here it's sort of just a series of turrets and that so let's put the turret bits in first because how many can we fit I'm not going to count how many there are in the in the cathedral I'm going to just see how many I can realistically fit. Then I'm going to just bring those vertical lines down. And do you see how they've all got a sort of horizontal band? Well, look, 
if we just turn those horizontal bands into continuous lines, this whole side kind of just makes sense, doesn't it? We don't have to draw every little detail. We just continue those lines. And we got a sort of another area here. So this I'm kind of having to invent because I've I should have continued. If I can put one more of these in. And this is where I've sort of mismeasured a little bit. But look, because everything's so loose, I can just add in a window and a window. And it looks like that's what I meant to do. Got another bit coming up here, just a big big triangle. And then thankfully we've got another building. <laughs> blocks off having to do any more detail. We could pop in even like the security light just as a an urban sketching twist, isn't it? To pick out those uh, grubby details which aren't beautiful but they, they explain the scene. Gonna add in some of this brickwork as well because I think it's quite a nice texture and having a, a bold line here really does separate you from the the complexity going on everywhere else pop in this big window we could even we could even just simplify the the ideas in this window with some really loose lines see i've not really i've not really drawn anything there but it looks all right because i've just taken the the ideas of what's going there and sort of let my pen drift over the page the other nice thing is we've got these sort of large bushes and things haven't we so suddenly we can build this bush to take away a bit of detail from from our sketch and we can build in this this wall as well it's got all sorts of shrubberies and things at the bottom of it so if we just get those shapes in we could choose to sketch these people or we could choose to leave them out um i think well, I'm on the fence, I'm on the fence. I'm going to do a little bit more up here and we'll, we'll just decide. Because one thing I wanted to touch on was where you have similar um, textures, it's nice to represent them in the same way. So here we've got a roof down here, a roof up here, and roof here. And just by providing them all the same kind of line work, your eye has to do, or your brain, your eye has to do very little thinking to work out what these bits are. Same with windows. I'm just giving them all you know, the same shape. Even when they're just floating in the air, our eye immediately knows what to do. And we've got another sort of tower back here. And again, if we just simplify it to look a bit like this tower, then our eye knows what to do. It knows what's going on. And that is much of our sketch really done, isn't it? Why don't we just pop a few of these people in? Why not? So they're all actually below the hedge line, which is convenient for our, for our sketching. And we'll just draw them as um, sort of inverted triangles, sort of carrots, somewhere between that and, and blobs, really. We can just pop tables around some of them. And a table can just be a little ellipse. And we're not really drawing their legs either, you see, we're just drawing a little dash wall or two below them. We can have some people stood up so they're a bit taller, and sort of their bodies are a bit thinner, that just shows they're in a different position. And a few more as so we come over here, just sat around some tables. And that kind of completes our sketch, doesn't it? And we've turned this incredibly complicated thing in less than 10 minutes into something very understandable. One more thing, one more sort of step we could take in our in our sketching is to just affirm a few of the contrasts and details in there. So we can add a bit of the background, for example. And then in windows, we could go around just hatching these windows black and adding that, that extra bit of shape. No need to do every window but doing a few just to get that idea is, you know, is an option anyway. And the, the closer we get, this is kind of our focal point, so the closer we get to there, the more detail, if any, if we're doing extra detail, the more detail we want to add in. 
We could even try and get a little bit more shape in here if we wanted, but I quite like the incomplete suggestive look that's going on. Just find some more windows we could pop in. So you just can keep looking and deciding if you want to add in a few more details here and there. But I'd really encourage you to stop before you've done too much. Just accept the sort of suggestive nature of a sketch. Don't feel drawn into having to complete it. And that means we can move on to our watercolours. So I'm going to use, because we've done a delicate sketch, I'm going to use a delicately sized brush here. And we're going to just be a little bit gentle with our colours. Perhaps a little bit of slightly minimalist um, approach to our colours. And I'm just going to clean out an area of my rather dirty palette and then we can work out what we're going to use. So we're going to go, like I said, a little bit sort of minimalistic. Definitely don't need to colour everywhere. Just going to get a, a nice warm brown here. Actually going to mix it with a perylene so we get sort of purple. And that will create quite just a warm uh, colour, but a muted colour to, to touch in a few places in our church, well our cathedral. We don't have to go everywhere, so we can just choose those places that we want to highlight textures. So down here, we can highlight the vertical nature by just bringing it down in vertical stripes. As we get towards the bottom, perhaps we want to bring in a bit more darkness to highlight that it's kind of in, in more shade down in the bottom. And here, so what I've done is I've brought in a little bit more of that perylene to make it more of a shadowy colour. Same over here. Ooh, I went to clean off my brush a little bit so I could keep it more muted. And we're just continuing those kind of same colours. But by keeping it gentle, not feeling the need to touch in colour everywhere, we can, again, it's the same principle as the sketch. We, we can always add more if, if we decide that's what it needs. But we don't have to. Get a little bit more of our perylene to create a bit more darkness. And I'm just going to wash this back a bit because, like I said, it's got a bit too bold and we're trying to create a nice muted sketch here. Something to control the complexity. So, up here in these towers where we just suggested their existence, well, just tiny touches of colour will be more than enough. Something just to show they're there, but they're kind of ghosting out in the background. Now I'm going to bring in a little bit more tone into this front building. So a bit more of the, the rich uh, brown quinacridone sienna. But again, just in a few places. So we've got this nice muted palette and we'll leave the muted part to do the work of shape and the rich colour to just punch it and bring it forward. A little bit up here and just touching a few sort of textural marks where we'd like them to show. And that's probably enough colour for now. Now the next thing is to get some of that roof in. Nice roof colour is a, a murky blue, I think. So we just bring in a, it's a cobalt mixed with a sort of the dredges of my palette really. But it gives you that nice shadowy blue and that lets us just join up a few of these things. We did the joining up with the um, with the line work already, making it all the same. And now we can join up all these things which are roofs. So these spires, this spire, this spire. And then what else can we do? We can, in, in our building itself, we can create ourselves a nice dark. So that's, for me, a perylene, a perylene violet, a bit of indigo and a bit of quinacridone sienna. And we can just, where we've created this depth and darkness in our windows, we can use the watercolour just to dab in.
just creating a bit of contrast. Perhaps where it's less well defined, we can just touch in different elements of that wash and then move it around a bit. But leave a little bit of light, a little bit of reflection and make it definitely different. So I'm just washing out some of that colour, making it definitely different from the, the brickwork which is going on around it. So there we are, we're gradually building up a, an interesting sketch. So next on to these greens, we've got quite a few of them, so we can be a little bit varied in our approach to them. And we're trying to make something which really pushes this building out as something different. And then we can go along, just varying that mix, all these little bushes. Some of them have got nice bright touches in as well, so we can do that with a little bit of carmine. Move back to our green. And then in this back one, maybe we'll make it a bit more yellow and then a bit more green again. Might be nice just to create a muted effect in our in our wall as well. So we're just I'm using a bit mostly of um, neutral tint here just to create that boundary. And then underneath we can get this path in as well. And what else might we want to do? So we can do a little of this brickwork. We've added it in, so let's make a feature of it having added it, can't we? Again, just a few little variations in the colours we're using. Just keeps things a bit fresh. And then just maybe some splashes. And maybe even just a few little splashes to suggest the sky. We could add in some blobs to suggest the sky. Don't need too much sky in this, I don't think, because it's a bit of a um, murky, pic murky sky picture, isn't it? But just a few little splashes, blobs, flecks here and there just to create these kind of boundaries. Maybe even bring it, bring a little bit of sky down here because it just shows there's a, a separation between these two structures as well. And if we want why not just add some little punches of colour to our people as well? A couple of people wearing red, just using colours we've already utilised elsewhere. So a blue chappy, another blue chappy, and a couple of, sort of dark shadowed people, and then some nice shadows underneath them. Shadows really ground things, ground people. They sort of just show they really exist. Also make these um, tables pop a bit if they're in shadow. There we go, pretty much done I think. So we can go back with our pen now, now that we've got these colours, and we can just lift a few bits forward. So I've done a video, I've done a few videos, but I've done a recent video on um, how different different elements of line work are, are helpful and what and in particular the weight of line. So heavy lines bring things forward, they highlight things. So just to reaffirm the shapes and things after we've added this colour, what we can do is we can go back in and just in a couple of places really re-energize that ink. And especially down this, which is our sort of high contrast uh, edge, just framing things quite nicely. Same along here. This wall is in front of this 
cathedral, so just having it pulled really shows it's supposed to be in front. The people probably oh, leave them as they are. Maybe just bring out a bit more shape in this bush. Same here. And there we go, I think. Stop while the going is good. As with most things urban sketching, you can always keep going. But I think this is a fun, it's interesting light sketch. It's taken something incredibly complicated and distilled it down, both with simple colours and simple line work, and given us something very achievable in 20 minutes or 21 minutes. So I hope you've enjoyed um, this sketch today. If you have, please do uh, let me know. Or if you haven't, please do let me know, because it's, it's great to receive all kinds of feedback. Um, and like and subscribe as ever if you want to see more of what I produce. Have a good day.